Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel and in today's Adobe XD tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this mobile app layout in Adobe XD using Stacks and I'm also going to show you some advanced features of Stacks like for example the distances between all of your elements inside of a stack and I'm going to show you how to do that using components and component states and how to adapt them and adjust them to your needs. So let's get started. All right, so here is the practice file for today's tutorial. If you want to get this practice file, make sure to check out the link down in the description below to download it and follow along for free. So what I have right here is the wireframe and I have the app design. This is going to be super simple layout. So without any further ado, let's just get started and let's organize some elements here and there. So what I'm going to do is jump in right here click on my layout so I can see my columns inside and I'm going to simply drag and drop some elements in just so I can position this layout uh, in a few seconds like so and what I'm also going to do is use this location icon drag and drop it right here and I'm going to use T and type in for example Belgrade because that's going to signal that this is the city where this uh, restaurant or this location of this user is located at and I'm also going to group it and I'm all going to call them for example location like so and I'm going to make sure it's in the center of this like so and I'm going to group all of it hit Control G and call it for example top nav like so and now let's move along to this search bar I'm just going to drag and drop the element in and I'm doing all of this just to show you how I'm working with so this is just my normal working process so to say so I'm going to type in text and I'm going to simply copy and paste the text which I already prepared in my uh, original example I'm going to use the open science let's see 12 for example for this case there we go and I'm going to position it 20 same like I did for the icon I'm going to take these three hit control command G position here and call it search and then we have this promo card background right here so what I'm going to do in this case is hit control or command D to duplicate this one and I'm going to drag it right here and instead of promo card BG I'm going to call it IMG so it's going to be an image and if I change the color for a second you can see that this corner and this corner uh, are rounded so I'm going to find top right type in zero and I'm going to find bottom right type in zero as well so I can straighten out these corners in just a second and then I'm just going to drag and drop an image inside double click on it and perhaps enlarge it a bit and position it a bit better so that my subject is nicely in focus and it's really well readable then I'm going to type in something and I'm going to simply jump inside and copy and paste the original text like so and I'm going to use this open sans bold 18 position it in the center and then perhaps drag it to roughly around here let's hit control command enter just to see how that looks like and you can see that we are moving along quite nicely and then I'm going to simply group all of it and call it for example promo card like so and then let's move along right here so what I have right here is the tab and you can see all I have is the tab background with the eight uh, pixel corner radius and I have recommended text inside what I'm going to do at this stage is turn on padding the padding is going to allow me to have consistent padding so if I select this you can see 12 on top edge 11 on bottom edge and 20 on each side so what that's going to allow me to do is when I hit Control G and give this group a name of tabs then turn on the stack and this is where the stack magic comes in handy all I'm going to do is simply duplicate this tab and on this first one what I can do is align this a bit better so what I can do in this case is select this tab and I can hold my shift key right here to come to let's say 20 and I can jump in right here and see that the distance for all of my tabs in this case is 20 pixels so first thing I'm going to do is select it come back right here and select for example this off white color and then I don't need this text to be this dark but actually let's select it and call it burgers 
and you can see in this case how it adjusts so let me double click right here to hide my grid so you can see it a bit better there we go so all i need to do is simply select it hit ctrl d 20 will be selected right here and let's call it for example pasta and you can see when i start typing oops we have a bit of a mishap right there so let's zoom in double click type in pasta so as i said you can see when i start typing in this box is going to expand because we turn on that padding when i double click to uh, when i hit Control command d to duplicate it it's going to create a new one and let's call it pizza whoops like so and let's see what we can do maybe another one so let's hit Control d one more time on that one and we can call this last one salads like this and now at this stage what i can do is super simple so here we have a complete layout if i hit Control enter to preview i cannot scroll so that's why we need to turn on scroll groups it's this one right here so you can click on it and you can adjust it to be roughly around here but now you're going to see another issue so when i scroll it's going to cut it off right here and what i need to do is have the same spacing as i have between these two elements so how to do that is quite simple select your artboard go to the grid and see right here so these are your margins left and right and you can see 24 pixels is the distance here 24 pixel is the distance here so all you need to do is select your scroll group and your stack and you can jump inside of here click right here and find the right value so this is a right padding value and type in 24 press enter or return press Control command enter to preview it one more time i don't know what's going on with all of my windows but never mind and you can see when I preview now, you can see that we have the same distance between these tabs and between these cards and all of these elements. So everything is nicely lined up to our grid, which makes it super simple to uh, adjust and to command across. So what I'm going to do next is move along to these cards. So here we have the restaurant card. Inside of it, we have card image, we have info, we have the name of the restaurant, and we have this time stamp. So what I'm going to do at this stage is simply group it like this and I'm going to take this call it restaurant cards like so and then I'm going to turn on the stack in this direction but for this what I'm going to do is turn on the stack which is going to go in this direction you can see we have 20 uh, distances for all of them and then I'm going to hit Control K to do that now I created a component with a stack included inside so what we can do at this stage is quite simply because we have the stack on this folder going into this direction is simply hit Control D, Control D, Control D. There we go. And now because the distance is just 10, what I can do is increase it to 20, for example, just to give ourselves a bit more room. Now straight away, what we can do is do the same thing because on this folder we have the stack and I'm going to include the padding right value. Just remember, same like we did previously of 24. That's going to increase the spacing on the right hand side to 24 as you saw right here and what we can do at this stage is because I want to have this card to be my original component master component which is this sign right here so all you need to do is click drag it to the top and it's going to uh, um, show up right here what that's going to allow you to do because these are children components of this master component or instances or copies however you want to call them once you actually jump inside and adjust this one you can see that all of the elements adjust accordingly what that's going to allow you to do is later on if you change uh, let's say the spacing between these or i want to move this to the center you can see that all of them are adjusting at the same time perhaps the timestamp you will like it to go to the right hand side so now you can do that and because the timestamp itself on the master component can have the stack as well then you can adjust it even further and then move along to that layout what you can also do is where it says component state you can right click and then you can reveal components in assets you can ungroup you can do whatever you want with it but for now what we can do is start adding some images so what i have right here is the card image number one it's going to fill in because this is a master component but when i start changing to the second one 
you can see it's not going to affect all of these other ones because just this first one was the original component in this case. So there we go. Now that we have all of that information, what I'm going to do is simply copy and paste some information in for some various and different restaurants. Let's say in this case, there we go. Let's call it like that. And I'm going to call this one like this. There we go. And I'm going to give it something a bit different. So 31 minutes, this can be something like 29 minutes. And finally, this can be, let's say 27 minutes. And just for some references, maybe we can adjust this instead of 4.3 to 4.1. This can be 4.2 and these two can stay the same. And of course, you can change these if you want to. So why is this important when you're working with stacks? As I mentioned, this is our master component in this case. So if we switch right here, you can see it called, it's called restaurant card. So if we switch on right here, here is why this matters. If your client, for whatever reason, decides that they want you to change this layout, let's say that you're creating a tablet layout in this case. So you need to, uh, let's say, expand the information to fill in a bit more space. So what you can do in that case is select these stacks, switch on this layout and let me hide food of the day just so you can see it a little bit better. Then you can come back to your master component switching over to this side and you can see the layout that you got straight away. Then what you can do is select your image. Let's say that your image needs to be bigger, but just remember to do that on the master component. You can expand this image and you can see it's going to fill in this space and you can straight away get to that information. What you can do in this case, because all of this is separate information, you can then group it inside of the master component. So this info and all of these group it, it's going to group in all of them and then turn on the stack for it. And now it's in this direction, but if I switch on over to this direction, you can see how it's going to fill in and then I can move it to the center. It's going to adjust for all of them and you can see how super, super simple this is to do and to adapt. So you can just imagine this working in a tablet layout, in a laptop layout, in a desktop layout. So you can play around with all of these settings and you can adjust them however many times you want and uh, get all of these different awesome layouts. So now that we are at this stage, let's finish off with this one. So food of the day. And what I have right here is the food image. So let me grab a food image really quickly. There we go. And now, as I said here, I'm going to include the stack obviously in this direction because you can see where this is going. And then we can select the food of the day and we can turn on the stack. So it's going to go down and we have the spacing of 20 because here we have spacing of 20. So one, two, three, copies. There we go. And let me simply select some random text, which I prepared from my original uh, design. And this last one is going to have the same restaurant name. There we go. This can be something like sushi, for example. And let's select this to be this restaurant name. There we go. Now, uh, I'm going to select this second one, drag and drop an image inside and then select this third one and finally select this fourth one. You can see I didn't use any components here and that's with a purpose just to show you why components are really important. So here we have food number two, food number three and finally food number four. There we go. And now if I decide to change this layout, for example, because remember all of them have components, if I hold my shift key, you can see that just this one adjusts to fill in this information. So if I decide to change the direction of my stack, just this one is going to adjust. Obviously all of these are going to adjust as well, but you have to adjust them manually rather than in this case, if I decide to change the direction of my stack to this one, for example, you can see that all of the instances of that component change and adapt in real 
time. So that's the beauty of stacks. That's how super simple and easy this is to adapt. And obviously we're going to do something like this, for example. And then finally, for this case, I'm going to still use the scroll group like we did previously. There we go. So now when I hit control or command enter to preview, and you can see we still have 24 in distance, just like in this case, and all of it works just fine. So just remember, if you decide to change these cards for whatever reason, and you decide to make any changes for whatever reason, make sure to create components like in this case, rather than in this case. So when I move this one, just this element moves in my design, rather than if I change this one, move it to the center or position it wherever I want, everything is going to change at the same time. So just keep that in mind once you start working with your stacks. Make sure to explore this practice file. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I upload new videos every single week all about Adobe XD, design, passive income techniques and so much more. So if you're interested in content like that, make sure to subscribe. And until next time, take care.